Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. If you are new, my name is Andrea and I encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join my family here on YouTube. Today's video, we are going to be doing a what's for dinner and these recipes are paleo and Whole30. So if you guys are doing either of those, I highly recommend you go ahead and try these recipes out because they were pretty dang good. So the first recipe is spaghetti squash spaghetti. As you can see, I have already pitted out all the seeds from the spaghetti squash and I'm going to be baking it face down or open side down for 40 minutes, 40 to 50 minutes on 400 degrees. And since my family was not too hip on the whole spaghetti squash idea, I am going to be just making regular spaghetti for them. So as you can see here, I am starting my spaghetti sauce by browning up some ground beef and I will go ahead and cook some regular spaghetti noodles because that's what my son and my husband prefer. So once your spaghetti squash is done, you can actually just poke the outside just to make sure it's tender. That's a good indicator that the squash inside is done. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to flip it over and take a fork and you're just going to pull away the sides of the spaghetti squash. This creates that noodle type effect. and. It does take a little bit of time. I think the longer you cook it, the easier it is to come out, but I did pull mine out, I think a little bit too soon because it was kind of difficult to get all of the spaghetti squash out. So I went ahead and topped it with my meat sauce and this is what the finished product looked like. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of spaghetti squash, sadly, but um, I did eat it and it wasn't terrible, but I definitely prefer pasta who's with me on that. <laughs> so the next night I decided to make smothered pork chops. Now this recipe is going to be probably significantly different than any other smothered pork chop recipe that you have seen since I'm not going to be using any dairy. So now I'm just going to fry up the pork chops just using a little bit of olive oil. And I really do not like to touch meat, so I avoid it at all cost. That is why I'm using a knife <laughs> to put my pork chops in the pan. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna just wanna salt and pepper your pork chops. You can really use is any seasoning that you like um, as you can see here in the next clip, I am going to be using some of Trader Joe's 21 Seasoning Salute. I really do like this for pork chops and for steaks. So while your pork chops are cooking, you are going to take about half of an onion and you're just gonna slice it up. It doesn't have to be chopped or diced or anything like that, just to get some nice chunky pieces. And 
And then next you're gonna take some Dijon mustard. I think this is about a tablespoon. And then I'm also gonna be taking a tablespoon of minced garlic, or excuse me, a teaspoon of minced garlic. And I'm just gonna be stirring that together. And this is going to be the sauce that you're gonna kind of coat the onions. So I am removing my pork chops and any fat, but you wanna leave all those tasty little bits that are on the bottom of your pan. And then you're gonna add your onions. And you're gonna to wanna to saute this on low to medium low. And then you're gonna add in that mixture of the Dijon and the garlic. And then you're gonna saute these on, like I said, low to medium low, just until the onions get a nice brown color. You don't wanna burn them. And then next you're going to add about a cup of chicken broth. You can also use beef broth, but the chicken broth is what I had on hand, so I went ahead and just added that in there. So now you're gonna to wanna to bring that to a boil. And then you're gonna add in your pork chops. Just stick them on in there. Try to get them coated in that liquid the best you can. And then you're gonna cover and you're gonna cook it for about three more minutes. And I am just gonna boil up some egg noodles. This is gonna be for my family. And I went ahead and paired this with some broccoli and this was so delicious. It was probably one of the tastier things that I have made. Um, I highly recommend you guys trying this recipe out. It was really, really good. So the next night, I'm gonna be making sheet pan balsamic chicken and veggies. So of course you're gonna need a baking pan. You're gonna to wanna to spray it down. And then you're gonna add your meat. Since it's just me and my husband eating the chicken, my son does not eat chicken, unfortunately. Um, we just have two pieces of chicken. And then I'm adding the veggies to the pan as well. Next, you're gonna take some garlic salt and just season everything. So you're gonna need some balsamic vinegar. I think I end up using probably two tablespoons you're gonna need some EVOO, probably about a tablespoon of that. And then I just added a dash of this Italian dressing just to give it a little zest. And then you're just gonna whisk everything together. And you're gonna pour the mixture directly onto the chicken and the veggies. Then you're gonna just pop it in the oven at 350 for about 20 to 30 minutes. And this is the finished product. My husband raved about this. He thought it was so, so, so good. And as you can see, I paired mine with a salad. So the next night I'm gonna be making sweet potato hash. So you're gonna need two large sweet potatoes and you're just gonna cube up the sweet potatoes you can really cube it up to whatever size you like. I did keep my pieces a little chunkier. I think if I make this again, which I probably will, I will make the pieces a little bit smaller. So 
while you are cubing up your sweet potatoes, you can also be browning up your ground chicken or ground turkey. I think for the specific night, I did use ground chicken, but you can definitely use ground turkey or even ground beef for this. So what you're wanna, gonna wanna do is spray down another pan and put all of your sweet potatoes on there. And you are gonna bake this on 425 for 20 to 25 minutes. Just ensuring that your sweet potatoes are nice and tender. And then I am seasoning it with salt and pepper just to give it a little bit of flavor. Next, you are going to dice up a pepper. I recommend using a red pepper, an orange pepper, or even a yellow pepper, just because they are sweeter. And then once you have your pepper all diced up, you're gonna add it straight to the ground chicken. And then just stir all of that together. Then you are gonna take some chili powder I am using two teaspoons of chili powder and just adding it directly to the mixture. And then I'm gonna add in some olive oil and you're gonna wanna do probably about two tablespoons of that. And next you are going to grab some garlic salt added a teaspoon of that and then I went ahead and added in some minced onion and I also used a teaspoon of that so now that you have all your seasonings just mix everything together to make sure all the meat is coated And by this time, your sweet potatoes should be just about done. So you're gonna wanna take them out of the oven and then you are gonna add them directly to the meat mixture. This is what gives it that hash effect. And then you're gonna wanna stir everything together to make sure that your sweet potatoes also get some of that seasoning on them to give them the flavor that the meat mixture has as well. Once everything is stirred up, I'm just adding in a little bit more salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna be taking some Parmesan cheese and just adding that to the top of the mixture. Obviously, this is not Whole30 or Paleo. I actually forgot to leave the cheese off half of it for myself, but that's okay. Next time, I'll make sure to leave off the cheese on my part. And this is the finished product. Once the cheese is melted, it is ready to serve. This was very, very delicious, and I highly recommend it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I will catch y'all in my next one. Bye.